hello everyone and welcome to my channel so today on my channel i'll be doing a full review of the asa aspire 5 for 2022 so previously i did a review of the asa aspire 5 for 2022 but that's the 14 inch model with a core i5 processor so today the one i have here is the mascot model it got a 15.6 inch full HD display with a 12th generation Intel Core i7 1260p 12 core processor with 8 core efficiency and the 4 core performance. So it also got the RTS 2050 with 4 gig dedicated of GDDR6 memory. It also has a 16 gigs of RAM and a 5 12 gig of NVMe SSD. So and it cost $1030 on ASA US website. So this is the max art model of the Aspire 5 series for 2022. It also has the same design footprint like uh, the 14 inch that I reviewed. Everything almost the same. It got the aluminium top with the ASA writing at the top and then also the Aspire writing at the back. It still got the same curve that you have on the 14. So, and also have the elevated design as well, like the 14, that elevates the laptop a little bit so that you can type comfortably when you press it on a table or on a desk. So, the port selections are the same except for the Type C port. So, the Type C port uh, supports video out, and also you can charge the laptop through the Type-C port. Unlike the 14 inch that I previously reviewed, you cannot charge the laptop through the Type-C port and it does not support a video art. So and then they also fix the trackpad. So I complained of the trackpad being small on the 14 inch. On the 15 inch it's a little bit bigger although not the, not uh, spectacular like the one on the XPS or the Apple MacBook. So and it also got a fingerprint reader, which is very good, and it works perfectly fine. So that's the fingerprint. So the keyboard also is a good. I'll come back to the keyboard. They also do the lid that you can now lift it with a uh, one finger, which is what I also complain on the 14 inch. You cannot lift the inches uh, the lid with one hand. So, but they fix it on the 15 inch. So now on the keyboard, it now has a number key. On the 15 inch has a number key, but the 15 inch now has a one level brightness settings. On the 14 inch, we have two level brightness settings, but on the 15, I don't know why they have to reduce it to one level brightness setting. And again, there's an issue with the keyboard. I forgot to mention it on the 14 inch. The same thing is happening on the 15 inch. The writings on the keys are not readable when the backlit are off. So I think they would have used a different print on the writings, especially on the function keys at the top. So when you put the laptop on a desk on the table and you are looking closely to the keys, you hardly see the right up or identify them. So except if the backlit are on. So which is a very big pain. So but aside that, the back uh, the keyboard works very well and then works perfectly so now about the performance of this laptop the laptop processor performs exceptionally well the 12th generation intel core i7 1260p is a very great processor when you compare the benchmark, it outperforms the 10th generation Intel Core i7 10875H 8 core processor that we found on high end gaming laptops of 2020. And the processor also performs way better than the Apple M1 chip. So you can see that this processor is very, very good and it's powerful. So if you are using it for any office tasks or word processing or anything at all that is not that too processor hungry so you don't you will not need to worry about it so now to the graphic card the RTX 2050 that ESA equips this laptop with is a very good card but the power that ESA gave to this graphic card is very very small 
Acer gave this a 25 watt that is the maximum power that this graphic card can take from this laptop which is very very low the RTX 2050 is Nvidia replacement of the 1650 series so at least a 50 watt power would have been better would have given the graphic card a boost so but the graphic card struggles very very well like when i tried this laptop with a forza horizon 5 the results were not encouraging so because of the graphic card is not getting enough power to do its job very well so forza suggested that a preset code for the graphic card is uh, low settings and at that low settings we have about uh, 59 frame, uh, frame per second so which is not very very good for an rtx 2050 with a 4 gig dedicated gddr6 now even on when the game is playing occasionally i do notice uh a hiccup a one seconds hiccup along the line when i'm playing the game so i just notice it and it's getting so one seconds so which is very very not good i know it's a processor sorry i know it's the graphic card that is causing that so overall it's not a gaming laptop if you are someone who is looking for a gaming laptop this is not a laptop for you but if you are using it if you try to use this laptop for a premiere pro or photoshop or any other editing work i think it's going to work perfectly because the processor is very good and i think the graphic card will be good for that but for gaming it's not a very good idea then under the hood the ram and the ssd and the wi-fi card is user upgradable so uh it has two ram slots which both of them are user upgradable unlike the 14 inch that only have one user upgradable ram and they have four gig on board so in this one you can upgrade both of the rams to any capacity of your choice and for the ssd it has two nvme slot so one is already occupied with a 512 gig and then the other one is empty so if you have any reason in the future that you want to update or upgrade your memory you can just buy it and put on the second slot then it does not have a 2.5 inch SATA bay for SATA SSD for 2.5 inch SATA SSD or SATA HDD. The 14 inch has, but it does. The 14 inch doesn't have two NVMe slot. So this one has two NVMe slot, but lack the 2.5 inch SATA slot. Now, for the battery, the battery on this laptop is a 53 watt. On the ASA website. It's a claim that the battery is going to last seven hours but on a window on the window the window estimated the battery life is more than 10 hours so that is window estimation not mine so which i believe with this so you are going to expect a good battery backup for this laptop so overall like i said it's a very good laptop and if you are in the market for a laptop with a very good processing power and uh, a manageable gpu and you are on a tight budget and you don't want to go for a gaming laptop a laptop that looks like a gaming laptop you can go for this one but if you are looking for a gaming laptop this laptop is not for you so that's it guys thank you for watching my video and please do subscribe to my channel for more videos so bye